Welcome back. This is our third now sit down Sunday. Yeah. Sunday Q and A, um, where we're answering your questions. Um, all of the questions that we've answered this week and the last two weeks have been from a community post we put up about two and a half weeks ago. Yep. Um, we're gonna put up a new thread. Yep. Try this a week. new thread. Yeah. Um, Overall, there was so many questions about sleep training. Yes. We are going to post that video this week on Wednesday. Woo -woo. Um, we really thought it needed the time and dedication for its own episode and also just for yes. us to do extra research to make sure we we're bringing you guys really good information. Yeah. So, Wednesday. Yes. Um, having ready. said that, this week we're answering questions about babies with flat heads and... Getting pregnant. So, um, <laughs> in case this is your first time meeting us, I'm Kurt, I'm a board certified pediatrician. I'm Sarah, I'm a board certified OBGYN, and, and we, we are, are the Doctors Bjorkman. All right, we are back. Happy Labor Day weekend. Uh, we thought about camping, but we kind of got rained out this weekend. Um, so we're here with you. For our sit down Sunday. And we are gonna get to some great questions from you. The first one comes from the Wilds Disney family. Um, and they wrote, I had an Explanon and it expired December of 2020. And I had it removed March of 2021 and it's been a year and five months and I haven't been able to get pregnant. Hmm. We've been trying for six months, having sex every other day during my ovulation window. I get my period every month regularly. I also track my ovulation and nothing. Any tips you guys could give me? Yeah, sounds tough. Really tough. Um, I'm sorry that you are going through this. The trying to conceive journey can be a real roller coaster. Um, and it just takes the fun out of it. It really sucks yeah. after a while and it take something that's supposed to be fun and makes it work um, and stress. And having been there uh, recently, totally feel your pain and I'm really sorry. For those of you who haven't seen it or don't know, we have a great video um, about tips for trying to get mm -hmm. pregnant fast. And so definitely check that out. It goes into a little more detail about some of the things we're gonna talk about. So honestly, um, it sounds like you're doing a lot of things right. Yeah. And that's what's so frustrating um, about fertility is that you can do everything right and not get the result you want. So what are those things like just for everyone else, like the things that to think about getting yeah. pregnant? So things to think about at the beginning are kind of knowing your fertile window and to do that tracking your cycles are a really great way to start because there are actually only about five days each month that you can get pregnant and those are those five or six days right before you ovulate mm -hmm. because sperm can only live three to five days in the reproductive tract and that egg that you ovulate um, actually only lives for 24 hours so you need the sperm there ready to meet the egg when you ovulate so cycle tracking so you know when you ovulate is really helpful and having sex every other day in that window is, is totally perfect okay yep and so knowing if when you ovulate or if you're ovulating using ovulation predictor kits or basal body temperature tracking or cervical mucus are different ways um, people do that um, so those are kind of big picture things for getting pregnant is knowing when you're ovulating and having sex at the right time. Um, we go into some more details in that episode, but it honestly sounds like you've been doing all those things. You have been having sex at the right time. And so the other important thing we- And she's having regular periods. Too. Right. The okay. other thing that we kind of talk about is that 90% 90, 90 of couples generally are pregnant within one year or 12 months of unprotected intercourse. And so at that point, if you are having, you've been having regular periods and you don't have any other GYN issues that we know of mm -hmm. um, or other medical history, we say, hey, at that 12 month mark, it is a good idea to figure out if there's anything else that we're missing. Um, cause Truly, honestly, it sounds like you've been doing all the right things. Mm -hmm. um, and if they were 35 or older, that happens at six months? We say if you are 35 or older and you have had six months of unprotected intercourse and you are not pregnant, we recommend, again, you see your OBGYN or a fertility specialist. So it sounds like you have have hit that mark just to make sure everything is okay with you, to get your partner checked out, honestly, mm -hmm. to do a semen analysis and make sure we're not missing anything there. Um, that would be a, a great next step. Um, 
So having tried for a year or more, the next step is to get help. Yes. Okay. And yep. I will say as a partner who's been through this too, and maybe had some mild male factor infertility as well, like getting both people checked out and like looking for the cause of that can hopefully find your answer. Yeah. So sending you all the luck, fingers crossed, um, that you get your big fat positive here soon. Okay, next question. This comes from Kawaii Heather, says, flat-headed baby from sleeping on one side. Is there anything safe we can use? A friend recommended a donut, donut-shaped pillow for our two-month-old, but I'm weary about putting anything in the crib with him. Okay, great question. Yes. I'm also very happy that you're being careful about safe sleep and avoiding having pillows or extra things in the crib with your baby. Totally. That, that can absolutely be potentially dangerous to them. Yeah. So I will say your baby is two months old. Having slightly misshapen heads is incredibly common <laughs> um, and usually is kind of a normal-ish part of being a new baby. Okay. Um, there are some medical conditions that happen when the little suture lines between the bones in the baby's head fuse too soon um, that like can sometimes require a procedure. So it's good if there's a significant flattening of your baby's head to at least have your pediatrician or their medical provider take a look at it to make sure that it's kind of normal flat head as opposed to a potential condition that may need to be taken care of. Because sometimes they have to wear those little helmets. Yeah, so sometimes uh, that can be <laughs> like so just cute. in the normal thing, but there are actually times where it requires a surgical procedure to actually release the suture lines um, in the head. Or wear the helmet. Um, the helmet is actually different. Oh, so okay. <laughs> what happens with the helmet? So maybe you've seen someone who had a family friend whose baby wore a little helmet, and that is called positional plagiocephaly. Okay. Um, and so what that happens is means just what it says. So because the baby, as it sounds like is happening with yours, is often laying with its head on one side, that side that they're laying on gets flat and actually kind of flattens out that side of their head and almost can push their ear on that side forward and push their forehead forward okay. as well. So that's where the helmet comes in handy. Okay. Um, in most cases of this, as babies start to sit up more and move around more at that six month mark, the head will start to round itself out because the suture lines still haven't fused for most babies until closer to one year. Okay. So have your pediatrician look at it, but tips for things we could do yes. to try to prevent. So I'm going to set my coffee cup down here and I actually have help from Cecilia's uh, stuffed animal bin to help us. This is the bunny from Goodnight Moon. Yep. Okay. Anyway, so what often that happens... That was mine, actually, when I was a baby. Oh, really? Yep. Oh. I slept with Goodnight Bunny every single night. The dog chewed at least one or two of them, and so it's not like the OG Goodnight Bunny, but that was my Goodnight this Bunny is when I was... at least 37 it's years old. old. Okay. That guy's old. Anyway, yep. this three-decade-old stuffed animal is going to help us a little bit. Yeah. What you may notice in your baby is that the neck muscles on one side of the neck can often be tight, too. And this, like, goes along with a baby who's always laying on one side. Or always looking one looking way. Like, exactly. Likes um, to look one and way. And what this is called is torticollis. And so definitely, like, see your baby's medical provider for this and they can help you but some things that can help you so the first thing is just prevention um, so if you're watching this and you don't yet have this issue with your baby it's good to try to help them lay on both sides yes. and like this can mean like on Monday Wednesday Friday they lay with their head to this side of the crib and then on the other days of the week they lay with this side of his side of the crib because oftentimes babies will like to look towards the window or right. look towards the door in the room yeah. um, this happens often with babies we see that were born prematurely and are, are in a neonatal ICU for a long time they, they it's look easy to one like thing. I always have them look at one thing yeah. and then if I'm always looking at this way I'm always on the right side of my head and then I get a flat spot there same thing is true with those bald spots, but it's a little yeah. bit more severe when that happens. So that when Cease was little, we'd be like, oh, is she always looking right or is she always looking left? And we'd try when she was on the floor, we'd, if she liked to look at this mirror, then we'd switch her. So then she was mm -hmm. looking at the mirror from the other side just to in, be intentional about trying to get her to be looking both ways and laying her head both ways. Exactly. And... Invariably, she had a bald spot on the back of her head anyway, and so part of just being a baby, I think she really didn't like her car seat with us, but neither here nor there. The other thing, if you've got a baby who is in this like 
two to four to six month range and they like do have a little bit of flattening in one of their heads. Yep. You've seen their medical provider and they say, hey, nope, all the suture lines are nice and open. Yep. This isn't premature closure of any of those. Um, sometimes what happens is that muscle on the side of the neck gets tight, the sternocleidal mastoid, and you can actually do some gentle like stretching with that. And I wanna be like, be very gentle with this. Again, we're not here providing medical advice to you, but something that we did with our child um, is just when you're changing them at time of diapers, a couple of things you can do is you can just gently just turn their head away from that side that's tight and try to get them to look towards that other shoulder. You can do this ideally while they're laying flat, very, very gently, just turning them in the other direction and coming back the other way too, just as they're working to stretch this muscle out here, practicing looking, looking that other way. The other thing then you can do too is just gently turning their ear to that shoulder this way. Again, really gentle stretching. And this just helps keep those neck muscles loose so that they don't get so used to always turning this way and that muscle gets tight too. And so some gentle things that you can do even as prevention for preventing yeah. some of that well, positional baby, baby stretches. plagial cephaly or flat-headed baby. Positional plagial cephaly, say yes. that six times fast. Um, so anyway, hopefully that helps you, but again, have your pediatrician take a look at yep. it. Make sure that there isn't something else called craniosynostosis, yep. um, which is just the premature fusion, uh, fusion of those suture lines. Yep. And then just stretch, do little baby stretches and be intentional about making sure they're looking both ways when yep. they're on the floor, when they're on your lap. Um, and and good really news help. is for most cases, it gets better on it its own a lot of it. when they get six months old. Yep. Um, in the more extreme cases, they get those cool little Cute helmets. little helmets. That are yes. work that I'm sure yes. you would like to avoid if it's you can. It's fun. Um, but they're cute. So, yeah. so those are some great questions we got this week. Look for a new thread this week for some new questions um, for next week's sit down Sunday with the doctors Bjorkman. And without further ado, the episode you've been waiting for about sleep training, sleep learning, getting that sweet baby to sleep is coming at you on Wednesday. So get excited. Okay. Make sure you're subscribed guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.